Hello, beautiful soul. Have you ever wondered how it is some people get started on their path, their lifelong journey, even before they know what it is or have a clue as to what they're going to be doing in the days ahead? Well, I'm going to be sharing with you, hopefully a short version of how my fascination, my lifelong journey of learning, teaching, and researching, and discovering crystals, minerals, and stones, what some people call rocks. <laughs> I guess in essence, they pretty much are. They're all gifts from Mother Earth, and my journey began in 1989. Maybe a little bit earlier, but that's the year that really comes to mind. In 1989, I read two books. The Spiritual Value of Gems, and the other was Crystal Enlightenment. Both books are now out of print. You know, 30 years ago, you would expect that. This is back in the day when crystals were just becoming of age, if you would. And living in Hawaii, there were little or few and far between opportunities to even shop for crystals. It was kind of, it was interesting. Anyway, so after reading the two books, and this is literally in the summer of 1989 or the fall, after I had returned to Hawaii, I had been living on the mainland. Uh, that's what we call the US <laughs> from Hawaii. After I think it was about four years, anyhow, and then, you know, fast forward a little bit. Well, I would find some different places to go and shop and, you know, rose quartz, amethyst, clear quartz. I got a small piece of um, black tourmaline and a few other pieces here and there. Fast forward a few years and I got to go to Mount Ida, Arkansas. And this is my one of this is. <laughs> I think it's my prized possession as far as crystals go, and I can hear them all going, hey, what about me? And I love them all, even the ones that I am blessed to bring with me from the different shows that I go to, to help them find their forever homes. But this one, look at this beauty. This is a huge smoky quartz. It is a light color, and I fell in love with it the moment I saw it. I think it weighs close to, I don't know, somewhere around 10 pounds, maybe 9 pounds. It's quite large, and it sits behind me on my desk here, on my desktop. Fast forward again. So part of this journey is a lot of starts and stops and reconnections and, and letting go of things because of what I'm supposed to do and what I'm not supposed to do, what I should be doing, what I should not be doing. And all the time in the back, you know, I kept kind of collecting books about crystals, crystal healing, Reiki, uh, crystal Reiki, pairings different different ways to work with crystals and they've always been a part of my life since 1989 even during those years when I wasn't working with them as far as you know having a day job and getting married and divorced and moving from Hawaii and getting to El Paso Texas <laughs> and somewhere along the way I picked it back up again then I set it down and I think it was about maybe 10 years ago, I was at the El Paso Psychic Fair doing aromatherapy. And a friend of mine decided that she was going to invite me to go to the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show with them a long time ago, long, long time ago. And, I, you know, I, I took my budget which wasn't a lot, and I brought back some polished stones. And I was at the psychic fair selling the little stones, la, la, la. And then again got distracted. I'm feeling a little disjointed in, in sharing this because, well, it, it's kind of putting yourself out there saying, hey, you know, 
this is my path, this is what I'm here to do as a big part of it, and yet I set it down more than once. I'll bet you can understand that or you can even resonate with it. So even then, this baby has been with me all the while. Some of the original ones I have passed along and I have a new personal collection. I kind of clear them out every once in a while. So I stopped again for about seven years. And then three years ago, three years ago, I was guided to reintroduce crystals here in my home as I was teaching workshops in my home once a month. And that particular part of my path lasted for a few months. And as I look back on it now and sharing it with you, it becomes clear that that was a way to kind of edge me or nudge me back into working with crystals. So that was in August uh, three years ago. With, this is 2019, so 2016. And I took myself to the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show in January of 2017. And I had a, a decent budget. Fast forward a little bit more as we're getting into crystals and I'm selling them, offering them and helping them find new homes and getting reacquainted myself. My business coach says, how about opening up your Etsy shop? And I went, okay. That was the second time I'd heard that within six months. I know guidance when I hear it, when I'm open to it, even if there's resistance. And there was, it's like, oh my God, now I have to do all this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've already got all this information on my website. So all I have to do is copy and paste it. And I've already got photos of some of the pieces. Okay. So I had really opened my Etsy shop in 2012 and decided it was too much. And I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing any crystals. I don't know what I was doing, but I had put it on hold. So fast forward some more. So I don't drag this out too much. and. Now we have an Etsy shop. I have a beautiful display case in my home. This is a pair of what we call healing crystals. And this one goes in my left hand. And this one is in my right hand. How cool is that? Not sure why these wanted to come out. Well, it goes along with Crystal Healing 101 that we taught for a while. And we're getting ready to really get back into the crystals, even more than what you may have seen in the last year. Uh, almost a year, we started teaching classes on crystals again. And this one is my favorite Lemurian seed crystal. Can you see all of the ridges on this guy? And his name is Max, Maximilian. He named himself. Now, not all of my crystals have names. Some of them tell me their personal names. I think maybe three or four out of my entire collection. I kind of think, I don't know how many I have. Anyway, I am nervous because I very rarely talk about me and my journey. And it, is, it has been a while in getting me here. And I'm sure my guides are going, you know. We don't see the problem. What is the issue? You know this is what you love to do. And I love working with crystals. I love showing my clients how to work with them. I love being able to, when I get a personal message through Etsy or Facebook or something and says, hey, you know, I'm looking for a crystal to do this, this, or this. What do you recommend? And I may ask a question or two if I'm not getting enough information right away. And usually what happens is because I am a highly sensitive, intuitive channel, I then tap into the person. Now, we may know each other a bit already. And if we don't, then I'll ask a few questions. Most often it's just tapping into their energy and us going to, you know, I go to my display case because then I can physically see. And I say, okay, so the citrine or the clear quartz or the kyanite or the black tourmaline, the rose quartz, the rhodocalcite, whatever 
comes to mind. And, and then I'll give them the links to the different pieces or the different sections of my Etsy shop. And then they get to choose and they say, well, which one of these? And usually I really prefer that someone to, if I'm not sure exactly which piece, then I'll give them a choice of two. Most often it's this one or it's a combination of this one, this one, and this one. <laughs> oh gosh, lots of transition in the last, nearly seven or eight weeks now so again sharing about my own life and my own stuff is not something that I'm comfortable doing I love sharing and teaching and and showing my clients how to work with these beauties because they're more than just pretty they're more than just rocks <laughs> they do more than raise your vibe they do so much more. You can actually hear them at night. I um, Now, not every night, but most nights as I'm closing up the house, turning off the lights and this and that and, and putting things up, I say, okay, it, mentally I'm asking. I don't always ask out loud. I mostly don't. So it's like, okay, and that is a signal to them. I used to say, okay, who's who's coming with me tonight? And I'll put them on my um, nightstand. And last night, my shun guide. Now, I'm going to turn around. So hang on a second. <laughs> Where are you? There you are. So last night, yesterday afternoon, late evening, actually, I started to feel really dizzy. And I said, okay, so the first thing I go through in my head is, did I eat something different? Is the vibration off? No. Is this a psychic attack? No. Okay, so it's a transition because I had done something major yesterday. Not that we're all not doing major things and, and taking that step out and getting out from behind ourselves and doing this and that. Hey, Nita, you know, it, it's more about really stepping into this because oh, – while it doesn't seem like it's a huge thing, it really is because now I'm becoming even more laser focused in the way that I show my clients how to have a better life. And this is more than just raise your vibe. It's more than just getting from struggling to consistent to feeling accomplished. It is about using the tools. So I was getting ready to tell you about Shungite. Yet late yesterday afternoon, I was feeling dizzy. So, and... I was able to ground myself enough to be less dizzy by the time it was ready to put my head on the pillow. And Shungite is the one who wanted to come home with me. Let's see you. Love, don't you just love those? Whoops, that way. <laughs> the little gold lines right in here. This is a piece of natural Shungite. I'm just getting used to the camera angle on this one. And it wanted to be under my pillow. Now, that way is really lumpy. But this way seems to work a little better. So he was under my pillow all night last night. And my pink halite, which is a new addition since Denver, which would be early September of this year, was on my nightstand. And between the two of them, along with the big piece of selenite that just lives there on my nightstand, we were able to finish processing the extra energy from the transition. I remember the very first transition. I'm not sure this has anything to do with crystals. Uh, back in like 2005-ish. And the first transition energetically shook me that I, I had to hang on to something and then sit down. Anyway, I'm not sure where the rest of this is going. But after a seven-year hiatus, we got back into crystals. And it's now been three years. And each time I go to a show, I it, the first two and a half years with, worth, I was getting the same things because they were safe. <laughs> and I knew them. I had worked with them, even though it had been a while. And like everything else, it's a language. It's a vibration. It is a way of doing things. No matter what level you're at in your business or your life, it is about 
utilizing crystals as a tool to help you get even further ahead, to help you dissolve those little triggers that come up. And this morning in my mastermind group, not well, a mastermind group that I'm a part of, I got triggered by something that's like, oh my goodness. And I felt massive resistance. When things come up and you don't know when they're going to, it's a what do you do? Which crystals will help well, which crystal will help you more in that specific moment? And it's not okay, well, I'm emotionally blah blah blah, so I'll get a blue one. Or I need more love in my vibration at the moment, so I'll get a pink one. Or I want to open my crown, so I'll get a purple one. Well, not always. It's not always the most common denominator. It's not always blue for spiritual expansion or emotional healing or a green one for your heart or prosperity. It's so much more than that. It's like balancing and blending. You know, you make a cake and you put lots of different ingredients together and the variations within that give you the different flavors, right? And that's about as far as I'm going to go with the baking analogy. <laughs> I'll get in trouble. So when you combine different crystals, you need to know what you're doing and how to listen to their vibration for speaking to you or calling to you in the moment, not just about purchasing them or going to a store or going to our online Etsy shop. It is about knowing how and when to use a Lemurian seed crystal because sometimes it's about more than knowing its characteristics and its properties. It's more than doing the, what do you call that, the research online because you can go to five different sites and they'll give you the five same things or it'll be completely different. So how do you know what it is you need to do? When you are connected, when you are tapped into your own intuitive self, to your guides and the crystals as a combination, and you're able to listen, you get the answers. And it also helps to have someone show you, <laughs> someone who's been there, who's been off and on, and now completely on. <laughs> Or something like that. So I get a little nervous when I talk about myself and my own journey. And you can see when we started to give you examples about the crystals, how it became easier. Because not only are they pretty, not only do they decorate your home or office, raise your vibe. These are amazing gifts from Mother Earth. And when you can do more than what you're already doing with them. Things change. They transform. And you know exactly which one and when. And which ones to pair together at which times for specific outcomes, for specific Transition and all kinds of other things that I you know they're done because I, I'm not getting anything else <laughs> tomorrow, which is Tuesday, October twenty ninth, yes. I have to look at a calendar because I often get the day and the date not matching. So tomorrow we're going to be introducing to you our first Power Crystals 101 workshop series. Stay tuned, stay connected, watch for it. It's going to be absolutely amazing. That's all I'm going to say about it now. And we have 
stepped into this part of my path. And I say we because it's my guides and I. Um, and I think I'm done. I'm not sure. <laughs> this is kind of a windy, windy live stream. But oh, well, that's how they go sometimes. Crystals are amazing. There are ways to explore more of what to do with them than you're already doing. They're tools, and they're more than pretty rocks that decorate your home and office and raise your vibe. And that's part of how we got started 30 years ago. And now I got the message that this helping y'all explore more about these beautiful gifts from Mother Earth that are made for us so that we can share more of ourselves with our friends, family, co-workers, and clients. So, I will see you all tomorrow.